Hello my friends, Terry here, and here's an exam problem that just came up and I wanted to share it with you. It's to calculate the change in Gibbs free energy, the change in Helmholtz energy, and free energy, the change in entropy of the system, and the change in entropy of the universe for a reversible melting of 36.0 grams of ice at 0 degrees Celsius and 1 atm. And we're given this information here, this change in enthalpy of fusion, and then the density, these are rows, density of ice, and the density of liquid at 1 atm. So let's, let's jump into it. This is a phase change, and that means temperature is constant, and the pressure is constant as well. Constant temperature, constant pressure, and we don't have a chemical reaction going on, so our Gibbs free energy is equal to the change in the enthalpy minus temperature times the change in entropy. Now, in this exam problem, there's a little bit of an error here, it's kind of a, a faux pas. You notice that there's just the change in G, but usually we like to say what the change is of. So this is the change of a process, and this process is melting. So it's before the, the fusion, so the change in Gibbs free energy of the fusion of it, which we really should have had it add it that really should have been there in the exam that's okay well we'll add it now so we're correct anyways and we can kind of correct the question now in order to get this change in gibbs free energy of this phase change we need the other variables really well we need enthalpy and and entropy change in uh, so that doesn't help and then the change in helmholtz free energy is going to be the same scenario we'll have another equation so let's start with the entropy here the change in entropy of the system. I derived this in a previous video. I'm just going to give you the equation here. The change in entropy for a phase change, in this case fusion, is going to equal to the change in enthalpy of that phase change divided by the temperature. We have the change in enthalpy of fusion. Oh, and now this is standard state. See this superscript here? There's another error that came up in, in this exam problem. <laughs> now, this is at, at 1 ATM. Now standard state is at, at 1 bar. Uh, so this must be an older problem here, uh, but sometimes old habits are hard to die. Uh, so we're going to say that these are standard states, even though it's normally one bar, but we're given a standard state here. So we're going to assume that this is all in, in one ATM here. So we'll, we'll put these superscripts here. And sometimes you see these older problems recycled where they use one ATM rather than one bar. But in some engineering courses, you'll see that the standard state is at, at one ATM, but in chemistry with IUPAC, it's one bar. Okay, so we have this here, and we can just plug this in. 334 joules per gram, and entropy is an extensive function. It depends on how much uh, substance there is. So we want to know this, kind of this absolute change in entropy. So we need to multiply it by how much we have, 36.0 grams. It's at zero degrees Celsius, uh, which of course has to be in Kelvin. So that's 273.15 Kelvin. 334 times 36 divided by 273.15. Looks all good. 44.0198. 44.0198. And our grams cancel out. So we're in joules per Kelvin, which is our main unit for entropy. Let's finish the other entropy one. So because this is a reversible process, Q, the energy transferred as heat of the system, plus the energy transferred as heat from the surroundings, that has to equal zero. So we're melting ice. So we have, we have a system here and we have blocks of ice. We got to melt it. So we have energy as heat going in. The surroundings is losing this energy as heat. And where's that energy? It's going into the system. So the system, the energy lost by the surroundings as heat is gained by the system. So it's zero. So we add them up and the change in entropy of the universe during this process, which is equal, which is the same as the change in entropy total is going to equal the sum of the change in entropy of the surroundings. Whoop change in entropy of the surroundings of the system plus the change in entropy of the surroundings we already know what this one is this is the the system is 44.0198 we'll do the sig figs a little bit later plus now this has to be equal and opposite because these surroundings this is equal to based on the thermodynamic definition of entropy negative q over T. 
So it's just negative the heat uh, received by the system. So that's going to be, well, negative the energy is heat received by the system. So it's literally this number here divided by the same temperature. So it's going to be this exact same number, 44.0198, except negative 4.0198 joules per Kelvin. So the change in entropy of the system, the change in entropy of the universe for this reversible process is zero, zero joules per Kelvin. And we should have three sig figs, so I'll just, I'll say we're rounding this to, so 44.0. Okay, so that's two of them. Now let's go for the Gibbs free energy here. We have the change in entropy of the system. We know the temperature, it's zero degrees Celsius. And we have the enthalpy, a change in enthalpy right here. So we can literally just plug it in. So we have 33, 334 joules per gram. And we need to multiply it by how many grams we have of the substance because Gibbs free energy is an extensive function unless we want the molar Gibbs free energy, but it doesn't say that. Temperature is zero degrees Celsius, which we want in Kelvin, 273.15 Kelvin. And then our change in entropy of the system is 44.0198 to three sig figs. Okay. 334 times 36 minus 273.15 times 44.0198. Now, what do you think it's going to be? <laughs> Before I press enter, okay? Look what we did here. We had 334 times 36, so that's the same number as here. So that, and then we're dividing, to get this number, we divided by 273. So imagine this number, multiplied by 273.15. This number times 273.15 is equal to this numerator here. And this numerator is equal, is this, is the change in enthalpy, see that? So literally these two, these numbers have to be the exact same. We multiply by the denominator. So we have 44.0198 times 273.15. That's equal to this numerator here. We're subtracting this right-hand side. So it's gonna equal zero joules, uh, joules, zero joules, right? Because our grams cancel, our kelvins cancel, and we're just left with joules and joules in each term, so that's so that's zero. Okay, so now for the Helmholtz energy, Helmholtz energy, we'll make another section for that. The change in fusion for this process of Helmholtz energy, the standard state at uh, one, one ATM, zero degrees Celsius, is, it's the change in internal energy minus T D S or T delta S T delta S and we need to find out what these terms are now this one we know this T delta S that's this right here so that's that's already done for us already completed so we just need to know what the change in internal energy is how can we get that well a good place is the first law so the change in internal energy equals the energy transferred is heat plus the energy transferred is work and this is a reversible melting, so we don't have any other work other than PV work here. And uh, so we can plug that in. Uh, but also this Q, energy transferred as heat, that's this, this delta H, because this is under constant pressure. Pressure is constant. Uh, let me know in the comments if you want to see the derivation, but under constant pressure with PV work only, mechanical equilibrium with the surroundings, this energy transferred as heat is going to equal our change in enthalpy for our phase change. We'll say this is for fusion. These are all for fusions, right? But we'll just we'll include that now. Okay, so we're doing PV work. That means work is equal to negative the integral of PDV. And this is a reversible process. Reversible process. Okay, so pressure is constant. So we pull this out of the integral. So negative P integral of dV. Oh, and we need limits of integration. So we'll go from initial volume to our final volume, initial volume to our final volume. And this is like the world's easiest integral here. It's literally just delta V. So the change in entropy, enthalpy of fusion minus P delta V. And delta V is V final minus V initial. So we're pretty much there. We know this is one ATM. We need our volumes. And how are we going to get that? Well, we have 36 grams 
and we have these densities here. So mass and density, we can get volume. Density equals mass over volume, which means our volume equals mass over the density. I'll, I'll use density as rho because that's was given to us in the exam. And we can literally sub that in. So we'll continue this delta fusion minus P and each one is now let's see mass over rho 2. Now what is rho 2 actually? We're melting ice so it'd be of water. Rho water, I'll just say rho of liquid minus m rho of ice ice here and we can factor out the m so enthalpy of fusion minus p so that's pressure and i'm going to factor out the m i'll keep it in blue and one minus rho of the liquid minus one over rho of the ice so we don't want to do more calculations than we need to. Less rounding error. Let's plug that into this step here. And I have a feeling things are going to look really nice. I know this might get look like it's getting long, uh, but it'll help us with calculations. So this whole delta U becomes delta fusion of enthalpy minus the pressure times the mass. 1 over rho liquid minus 1 over rho ice and that's subtracted by T delta S naught. And why did I do this? Well, remember this here? This is the Gibbs free energy. See the change in enthalpy of fusion minus T of fusion DS. I, I didn't have fusion here on the, after this, this delta sign maybe to save space or whatnot, but this these two things, that's that's this here, that's the change in, in Gibbs free energy, which is zero. <laughs> so these terms cancel out completely. Uh, so that's fun. And this is just pressure times the mass, one over rho of the liquid, minus one over rho of the ice. And that's our change in Helmholtz energy. So one smaller calculation. So that's cool. We're gonna have to convert units. Pressure is one ATM. The mass is 36.0 grams. The density of the liquid is 0.917. It's grams per centimeters cubed. It's not the nicest. Zero point, let me make this a little bit bigger here. 0 0.917 grams per centimeter cubed. A minus one over, and I think the ice was just 1.000. Yeah, Ro the density of ice, 1.000, 1.000 grams per centimeter cubed. Okay. So let's type this in before we do the units. I could, we could put the unit analysis, dimension analysis here, but uh, let's just plug it in to keep it simple. Uh, one, one ATM times 36. You think we would get more sig figs for the pressure, hey? Okay? Oh well. Okay, so times pressure of 1 divided by 0 0.917. 917. I love these calculators where you can see what you're typing. Minus, like the, if, so in an exam, it's nice to have one uh, that, uh, where you can see two screens here. <laughs> I just did 1 divided by 1. That's a hard one. <laughs> talking at the same time. Okay, so 3.25845, 3.25845, should check units, uh, grams cancel out, and we have kind of annoying ATM centimeters cubed. So let's convert these centimeters to liters, and there are, so in one liter there are a thousand centimeters cubed. So that, those cancel out. So now we're in liter ATM. So we need this in joules. The Helmholtz energy is in joules, free energy is in joules. And a constant that we know is in joules is the gas constant. 
So we can multiply this by a fraction by the gas constant divided by the gas, gas constant. And if we do this, we don't change this number. You see that? Now, as it looks right here, it doesn't look like we did anything. But if one of these gas constants had the units of joules in it, 8.3145 joules per mole Kelvin, and the other one had ATM in liters, so 0 0.08206 liters ATM, per mole Kelvin. Okay, I'm just gonna fix my brackets here. There we go. This, we're just dividing this by the gas constant and with different units or liters ATM cancels out or mole Kelvins cancel out and we're left with joules. So that's awesome, nice little trick there. Uh, let's plug this into the good old calculator. 3.25845 divided by 1000. I got to go equals first uh, because it's not going to like, I, I kind of know this calculator. 314. It's usually pretty good, but okay. Divided by 0 0.08206 equals 0 0.33. 0 0.33015. 0 0.33015. And we're left with joules. And that's awesome. We have We'll keep three sig figs, even though it's pressure is in one sig fig. I don't think the 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 prof wants one sig fig as an answer, uh, so we'll leave it as as three sig figs here. This is our change in change in Helmholtz free energy of of fusion here. All right, everyone, hope you liked it. We went through a lot of things there. I really enjoyed this, did some great units. If you got some value from it, then you're welcome to like the video. It motivates me to make more. And thanks again and see you in the next one. Cheers.